Splinter Cell, one of my all-time favorite games, and one of the first games I've ever beaten on the original Xbox. Just like Metal Gear Solid, Splinter Cell's primary focus is on stealth. In fact, Splinter Cell was originally going to be a sci-fi James Bond type of game, and that could have been pretty awesome if done right. But development was told to create a Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty killer. Did they succeed? Well, it's really hard to say. I do think the stealth in Splinter Cell is a little bit better and the story is better in Metal Gear Solid. But I still can't say which is better, so I'll just leave it at that. The game ran on Unreal Engine 2 for the heavy use of dynamic lighting effects and realistic physics. The voice of Sam Fisher is Michael Ironside, which you may know him from Top Gun, Total Recall, and Starship Troopers. The Xbox and PC versions of the game were created by Ubisoft Montreal, and the GameCube and PS2 were created by Ubisoft Shanghai. Although these are pretty much the same as these, Splinter Cell on GameCube and PlayStation 2 have some minor story changes, slightly redesigned levels, decreased graphics, and in-game cutscenes replaced with full motion video, such as this one here. The cutscene on left is actually in-game from Xbox and PC, and the one on right is what the PlayStation 2 and GameCube would show. Although the PlayStation 2 and GameCube were created by the same team, only the PS2 version came with the nuclear power plant bonus map. However, on the GameCube, the Game Boy Advance connectivity is supported, so if you connect your GBA to your GameCube with this cable, a map of the level you're currently playing is displayed on the Game Boy Advance and includes locations of enemies and items. Later on, the Xbox and PC also offer three bonus missions which on Xbox you can only get from Xbox Live and you can't really get them anymore unless you mod your system. And PC offered the bonus missions as downloads which you can still get by doing some googling. There's plenty more history to go over but let's just move on with this side by side. The PC showing some awesome textures. The Xbox looks pretty damn good also. The GameCube looks better than the PlayStation 2. If you look at this in the background you can see that it's a lot more crisp. Let's just take a second and look at the Xbox and GameCube. For some reason, on the PlayStation 2 GameCube release, they decided to drain out all the color in the training mission. It makes it look very dull in comparison. Also, when Sam is moving across the ledge, notice the animation in Sam's belt on the Xbox. It doesn't do it at all over here. And here we have a close-up of Sam Fisher. Overall, the training mission at the beginning of the game is exactly the same, but you do see some noticeable differences in the graphics. This is the last thing I want to show from the training mission. These two just look so much better, and these two actually added in another element to the mix. They added in some steam to cover up the swinging chains. I did like this addition, I thought it was a nice touch. Let's compare the PC and GameCube for a second. Not graphically, I just want to show some differences in level design. I played the PC and Xbox first, and if you look, there's no door here, but there is one here on the GameCube. This is where the level designs start to change. On the PC, the door is all the way on the right. Not only does the PC offer more fire animation, it also looks better. Running through these rooms from door to door, escaping death while listening to Anna give me directions was an intense experience. You just don't want to stop or you feel like you're gonna die. But when you play the GameCube and PS2 version, they opted out of the open doors to have all the doors shut, and since the hardware couldn't handle it as well, they had to have less fire. So the whole experience just wasn't as thrilling. Right after you escape the burning building, you come to this balcony. On PC and Xbox, you jump across, but on PS2 and GameCube, there's no gap. You actually have to walk to the end and go across a pipe. Not even sure why this change was needed. Once you get to this part of the game, you'll notice they decided to box it in down here. But up here, there's a balcony, which you can look down from, and there's another building. I forgot to look over there on the Xbox, but it's the same as the PC. Another change here is how you get into the building. On PC and Xbox, you sneak through the bushes, cut to the left window, and you wait for the guy inside to come out. Then you simply sneak in, but on the PlayStation 2 and GameCube, you sneak to the right, and you can't see through the windows, so you don't even know if a guy is going to show up, but he does. 
he comes out and you wait for them to talk and then you're gonna open the door follow behind him and give him a nice good whack. The layout of the house is different too. Up here the TV's on the right and down here it's on the left. Splinter Cell on PS2 and GameCube breaks up the levels with loading screens and you can't go back either. The Xbox and PC usually just offers one big level where you can go all the way back if need be. Now there's good and bad with this. If you're playing on Xbox and are pretty far along and a guard finds a body you did not hide good enough, they will trigger the alarms and on the PlayStation 2, you won't have to worry about prior dead bodies after the loading screen which can really help out. Now down here, there's no guard patrolling so you can just run right through it which makes it easier and this happens often where there isn't any bad guys in the level on the PlayStation 2 and GameCube copies of the game. I'm not sure if this happens more than once but the PC and Xbox require a code to open the door, and these two just open right up. Check out the anti-aliasing on the bars on the GameCube, it looks really bad. Another small difference is that there's a window in the back over here and there's no window down there. When you beat the mission, on the GameCube and PlayStation 2, you just appear outside, fall from somewhere, and then the van just shows up. On the PC and Xbox, you actually walk out and run up to the van, and this is the only van that has a chicken on it. Up here we have a nice blue sky and scenery, and down here it's very bland and polluted. I really like this scene, and I thought it would make for a pretty cool comparison. So in the next part of this level, when you reach this door, you see a picture, and then two guards to the right. But on the PlayStation 2 and GameCube, you have to go through a hall first, then when you open the door, the guards are facing you, and this could throw you for a loop if you're playing both versions like me. When you open this door, you see another door straight ahead. You then proceed through it, and then you hang and move across the ledge to the kitchen with the chefs. But on here, you don't have a door. You have an opened vent. So you climb up through it, then you're presented with a level break. Once it loads back up, you continue to crawl through the vent and make your way to the freezer that's in the kitchen. You end up in the same spot, but just do it in a completely different way. If you take a look up here, you can see that there's a guard that's not on the other two. And the GameCube and PlayStation 2 has a guard who walks back and forth, which makes this part more difficult. On PC and Xbox, the guard just stares and guards a shut door. So now we have a big difference here. On PlayStation 2 and GameCube, it's nighttime, and the Xbox and PC, it looks to be sunset. I actually think they both look pretty good, but I do prefer the sunset over the night. There's so many little differences here and there, but the overall game is pretty much the same. Well, that's it for me guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what my next side by side should be, I Ninja or The Warriors. Cast your vote in the comment section below. Take it easy guys.